Hey everyone, just taking a quick 15 seconds to let you know that my new book, The Fitness Mindset, Eat for Energy, Train for Tension, Manage Your Mindset, Reap the Results, which hit the bestseller list within 24 hours of its release, is now available to buy on Amazon. So if you're looking for everything you need to get into incredible shape and the mindset to keep it forever, be sure to check it out. Thanks for listening and I hope you enjoy this week's episode. Welcome to Brian Keane Fitness Podcast, where we talk everything fitness, nutrition and mindset with your host, Brian Keane. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Brian Keane Fitness Podcast, where we talk everything fitness, nutrition and mindset to help you with your goals. I'm so excited today to have my guest, Daniel from Recalibrated Bodies. What up? Daniel has been training for over 10 years and is a two-time Irish national physique champion. After graduating as a fully qualified airline trained pilot, he switched careers to pursue his passion for fitness and health. Daniel is now one part of Recalibrated Bodies with his partner, Amanda. Daniel, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, my man. Mate, Daniel, there's so much I could talk about in terms of how your training background, your pilot background, Recalibrated Bodies. <laughs> is there anything else that you'd like my audience to know about you before we go on? Just that I surf and that's about it. Really, travel the world, that's it. Yep. Nice. As you can tell, Dan- uh, Daniel is not from here. He's from what part of Australia? Gold Coast. Gold Coast, yeah, yeah of course. Yep. Um, all right, Daniel, give us a little bit of a background I'm going to link up in the show notes. You'll see photos of Daniel. He's got an absolute crazy physique. Um, he's one of the top men's physique competitors in the country. He competes internationally. Daniel, what got you into fitness first? To start with, it was just like basically what everyone else gets into fitness for. It's just to look better, you know, just to have a bit of muscle mass, look nice and lean, get those abs, that sort of stuff. It was actually uh, when I was in school, I also got into a fight one day and from that moment on I was like you know what I need to get strong I need to actually try and become more athletic and protect myself as well and that kind of spurred it on to actually get me into the gym okay what age did you start training around about 15 to 16 okay were you a skinny kid or a fat kid or a sporty kid what was your I was like? more kind of on this I was never really skinny but I was more on the skinny side kind of like an ectomorph frame okay okay and what got you into the gym first and did somebody bring you in did you join up yourself did you get weights at home yeah no it was completely self-motivated I just kind of knew of a gym that was around the corner from my house and I thought you know I'll go in there and start training see what it's like a little bit and I got in there and the guy who owned the gym was actually a uh, a pro bodybuilder in Australia and he hooked me up with a good program, did a couple of PT sessions with him, showed me how to do everything correctly and I just fell in love with it from there. Okay, awesome. Um, because of your, if anyone that follows Recalibrated Bodies on Instagram, you see they're traveling the world all the time, their online business is booming. You do so much between yourself and Amanda, you're always training, you're always traveling, you're always working with clients, competing for shows, doing photo shoots. What do you, does your first hour or first 90 minutes of the day look like? For someone that's so successful as yourself, do you have any routine or do you just kind of go with the flow with it? Or what does your first hour or 90 minutes of the day look like? Yeah, at the moment, it's very everything is very tightly organized. I have everything down to an absolute fine art in terms of the schedule in my day. So at the moment, because I'm really close to my competition, the first hour is always steady state cardio. So I get up, I just get straight into the treadmill. And as I'm completing a Bachelor of Science in Strength and Conditioning at the moment, I do study at the same time. So I have the laptop hooked up on top of the treadmill and I'll be studying and get my hour of cardio done for the day. That's a great idea. Double two, two birds with one stone. That's That's awesome. What degree are you doing? A Bachelor of Science in Strength and Conditioning. Okay, nice. Jeez, yeah. between yourself and Amanda, you're going to have everything ticked off the yeah. box. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, four degrees will be between us by the time I finish this. That's amazing. <laughs> um, okay, so with your training background, with your nutrition background, with your pilot background, which is was something we may get into, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Daniel was a pilot, which is I just find incredible. Yeah, in a, in a re- more past life to fitness, yeah. <laughs> what, what made you make the transition over? Why did you go from fully qualified pilot to uh, to fitness? To, to make a long story short, basically I got into a cadetship with an airline. So I did a Bachelor of Aviation over in Australia and I got into a cadetship with an airline, completed the cadetship with them, got all of my commercial pass license, became fully trained for the airline um, workforce. And then at the end of it, they weren't hiring anyone because the market is so um, versatile over there that they just went down into a trough. They couldn't afford to hire any more pilots. So they kind of just left us in limbo. And then it was that point I had to make a decision as to whether I was going to go do some more general aviation flying, which is not so much fun and the pay is pretty crap or try and stick it out and wait until they finally do hire me. And it was that point that I kind of started to assess everything. And I was kind of like, well, how passionate am I about flying? 
And on reflection of it, I didn't want to move away from where I lived um, on the Gold Coast. I loved it there to go fly these planes that I really didn't have that much passion in. So it was that point that I said, you know what, if I'm not going to get into the airlines and kind of have the lifestyle that I'm living now, then I'm not going to do it at all. And that's when I said, I'm actually a lot more passionate about fitness. I always have been. I'm just going to go down that road and actually do that as my career now. Okay, so you said you love the Gold Coast, and obviously you live in Ireland now and travel around. Yeah. Uh, well, what made that switch? Was it meeting Amanda, or did you yeah. move here? I actually don't know your backstory in terms of <laughs> how you and Amanda. It's met. actually a crazy story. So Amanda actually used to be my manager at GNC, which is a supplement store, okay. massive in America. So she actually used to be my boss in Australia. And <laughs> that's how we met. <laughs> nice. I love yeah. the background on that. I, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. So um, we met each other. We kind of like fell for each other then and. And then once I quit that to go That was in my, Australia. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I was doing that while I was studying my Bachelor of Aviation. And then once I got my cadetship with Qantas Link, the airline over there, I had to move away, quit that job, and we decided to continue it on because we really liked each other. And um, we were together for a, with for about a year. And then Amanda's father fell unwell with cancer. Thankfully, he's fine now, so no mm-hmm. drama with that. But we actually moved over to Ireland to help out with the family and everything like that. And then while we're over here, we said, you know, there's nothing really going on in Australia. Should we actually just stay over here and do a little bit of traveling while we can because it's so expensive to fly out of Australia to see Europe. So we said, you know, why not? We'll spend a a year here in Ireland. We'll just go travel as much as we can and then we'll sort our our lives out after that. And that's how we ended up here. Okay. And what brought recalibrated bodies to the front? We kind of spoke a bit about this off air. What was the start of recalibrated bodies? What made you decide to to do that? Yeah, so basically, when we I once I decided that I didn't want to become a pilot anymore, I then went ahead and did my personal training course, and I did a nutritional advisor course, and then once we moved over here, I then started actually just personal training and doing tr- um, nutrition programs and everything like that. And then we said we may as well actually start up an online business because we're going to be doing so much traveling that we can't realistically PT people anymore. And so we started an online business, something that we could continue on while we were traveling. And then it just kind of boomed from there. Okay, that's awesome. And yeah. you were saying that it's funny, anyone that's not following on Recalibrated Bodies, I know a lot of you are. It's amazing split the way that their content, it's very much Daniel takes the guy's side, Amanda takes the female side. And there's literally something for everybody on there. Um, you originally thought about breaking it up into two separate things and you ended up merging it, didn't you? Yeah, that's exactly right. So like when we were setting up the business, we're kind of like, well, you know, is everyone wanting to gonna see or want to see my stuff as well as Amanda's stuff? Because we want to kind of like target a certain audience at the same time. And then we decided, you know what? There's actually no one that actually shows both perspectives, both in the male and the female side of things. And we thought we may as well just actually make it one whole company work together and build our brand and our marketing and do all of our programs together that way. I love it. Like you got engaged, was it late last year? Yeah, late that's last right. year. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. they're getting married. Just after spring classic. So it was something in like April or May or something like that. That's amazing. That's a <laughs> strength to strength with recalibrated bodies right there. Um, all right. So Daniel, I'm going to reframe this question slightly just because me and you just hit a training session um, yeah. and we very, very different training styles. And I felt because we were going heavy bodybuilding style workout yeah, right. and, and I got a massive pump from it. It was amazing. <laughs> um, but it's very, very different to the kind of strength and conditioning and metabolic conditioning stuff that I normally do. Um, so it was a nice switch up. But what are the kind of top two or three training mistakes you see people making? If you're talking about bodybuilding for building kind of like muscle size and aesthetics and stuff like that, one of the biggest ones I see people making a mistake of is not using correct form. Yeah. When it comes to trying to stimulate muscle growth, one of the biggest things you can you have to focus on in your training is putting that muscle under stress. If you're not completing an exercise with proper form or technique or control, you're essentially distributing that load onto a different muscle group, which is spreading the load out over multiple muscle groups, which means that that specific muscle group you're trying to target is not being stressed as much as it potentially could be, and it's not going to be stimulated to grow as much as it could be. Yeah, I love it. That's an amazing tip. I, I, I talk a lot about form and working the muscle, getting the mind-muscle connection with the muscle you're trying That's to work. It. Um, yeah. But it was amazing today. It was real bodybuilding, 8 to 10 reps, yeah. like to failure on it. Really, really good. So check yeah. out Daniel's workouts on Instagram <laughs> as well. Um, so Daniel, you've done a lot in, how old are you now? 25. 25. Like I, I, I always, when I, when I speak with Daniel, I always think he's older because yeah, he's, he's so much younger, but I always think he's older because of everything he's achieved. He's a two time national physique champion. He's a qualified pilot. He's doing a strength and condition course. He's 
one half of calibrated bodies and the list goes on and on and on um, but I'm wondering Daniel if you could go back in time to your 15 or 16 year old self is there any advice you'd offer him in terms of nutrition training mindset business life advice that you would offer the 15 or 16 year old Daniel Brack to be honest I've I feel like as if like I've made a lot of mistakes in my past certainly but I feel like as if I've done a lot right as well like I mean like I am quite successful for my age and that's not because and that's, you know, that's intentional. Like I try to make sure that I'm doing everything right. So probably one of the only things I'd go back and change is to follow your passion, the one that you're most passionate about straight away. Because I did waste, you know, six, seven years of my life chasing a, and a lot of money, by the way, mm. chasing a career and becoming a pilot, even though it wasn't really my whole passion. It wasn't the thing that I would actually spend my spare time doing. Uh, so that would be the only piece of advice that I could really give from a mistake perspective is to just go straight for what you love doing and don't try and focus on anything else but that. I love that. I am. Um, I have this in a section of my book that will be out possibly by the time this goes out um, that you're better to have the ladder against the right wall and be at the bottom of it than be halfway up the ladder against the wrong wall. Exactly. Um, so it, it's something that I try and live my life by. So they say success leaves clues. So it's a great message from Daniel there too. <laughs> um, okay, so last question for the rapid fire. Anyone that listens to the podcast or follows any of my social media, you guys know that I'm big on reading. I'm big on books and um, learning from other people's mistakes to cut your own learning curve. Daniel, is there any book that you think everybody on the planet would benefit from reading? Definitely. In terms of just global lifestyle perspective and just improving yourself in general, one of my favorite books is The Art of Happiness by Dama Lama. It just hits everything in the right note. You know, it tries to teach you to not focus about wealth and money, but actually focus on what makes you happy and actually bring satisfaction and happiness to your life as opposed to what you think is materialistically happy. I love it. Like there's a there's another book I love that just as you said that reminded me. Um, Daniel Gilbert, stumbling on happiness. Um, he's a scientific researcher is talking about how experiences make us happy as opposed to external things that we buy. Um, I think you're kind of walking example of that. You and Amanda with your travel and <laughs> the way you live your lifestyle as well. So um, so that's a brilliant one. I'm going to link the Dalai Lama book in the show notes too, and I'm going to get on that myself because I haven't read it. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a great book. You definitely have to check it out. A hundred percent on yeah. that. Okay, so Dan, for the rapid fire, I'm literally going to throw some questions at you. You can expand on them. You can do one word answers on them. Whatever way you can think you can provide the most value. You ready? Go. When you think of the word successful, who's the first person that comes to mind and why? Richard Branson. Why? Because not only has he built such a large company or multiple companies, but he's actually focused on keeping his employees happy. And I love that. Like I don't see building wealth just for yourself. I believe in building wealth for everyone that's underneath you as well. Love it. That's it's funny. He, there's this, a trend coming with that question. Um, <laughs> what purchase of a hundred euro or less has most positively affected your life in the last six months? Ooh, in the last six months, jeez. Or 12 months. Um, probably when we went in Thailand, we went and did like a, um, an elephant safari and the trip itself cost something like 60 or 70 euros or something like that. But you got to actually contribute, contribute to what they're trying to do over there, which is try and stop all the elephants being used for tourism, which ends up, it can potentially kill them due to breaking their back and legs and stuff like that. I have to say under, underneath a hundred euros, that'd probably be the most satisfaction I've ever got from something to try and actually help such a great cause and see the elephants, you know, so happy in their own environment. I love that. Next time I go to, well, when I go to Thailand, it's on my to-do list. That, <laughs> um, that's definitely something I'm going to do. Um, do you have a quote you live by or think of often? Yeah, one of the best quotes that I love is, I can't remember exactly because it's quite a long quote, but basically it goes along the lines of, be careful of what you think because your thoughts become your words. Be careful what you say because your words become your actions. Be careful of your actions because your actions become your habits and your habits become your lifestyle, basically. I love it. I've literally got, and again, I'm not plugging my book, but I have books <laughs> very similar. Buy my book. This no, is not planned. <laughs> this is not planned. But I, I, I do love that. I regularly <laughs> say as well, thoughts become things and the thoughts that you have become the actions that you take and the actions you take become the life that you create. Exactly. Um, I love that quote. Do you know who it's by? Uh, no, actually, no. I must check that one out because yeah. I, I, I like that. What's the worst advice you see or hear being dispensed in your world, whether it's fitness, nutrition, training, whatever it is? What's the worst piece of advice you see being dispensed or that you see circulating the internet? There's so much out there. I mean, there's so much bad advice that people get on a regular basis. But I guess 
one of the ones because of obviously being um, what we do, one of the ones I see the most is, is regarding to nutrition where people think that you have to have this perfect diet where you don't eat any processed foods or anything like that. And although you should avoid processed foods as much as possible, balance is key in life and that's the long that's what's going to happen lead you to long-term success yeah i love it that's great advice and again i've been victim of it myself in the past i've been very dogmatic on well this is what works when the truth is what works is best is finding what is nutrition plan is in alignment with your goals if it's into your lifestyle and your schedule and then making that apply um so great answer love that exactly um what have you changed your mind about in the last few years? I'll tee this one up a small bit because I was a victim of, well, everybody should do high volume training because DTP and high volume works for everybody. When the truth <laughs> is, some people respond better to heavy weight. You're probably one of those examples. Yeah, that's right. Um, is there anything in the last few years that you've changed your mind about? Um, yeah, actually, there has been quite a bit. Like going back to the nutrition side of things, that's been one of the biggest ones I've actually changed because I came from a very background of following the likes of Arnold Schwarzenegger and those kind of guys where they were like, you know, don't waste any calories on junk food, just focus on getting clean foods as much as possible. And although it is still the best advice in a general sense, it's not something you have to religiously live by. And that's something that I've been able to incorporate into my life that has helped me adhere to a more calorie restricted diet and get me greater results. Love it. Brilliant. Um, if you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? Never say can't. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> those who say they can and those who say they can't, you're yeah, both usually right. I love it. that. Um, what is something you believe that other people think is insane? Uh, so what they think I do is insane or what I... What do you think that other people think is insane? So for example... I will say I'm a high end believer of that thoughts become things and you can literally create anything you think of and that your reticular activation system in your brain will guide you towards it like a GPS if you decide that that's what you want. And I'll say that and people will be like, that's a bit fucking woo woo or whatever. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's what I believe. And people think it's insane sometimes. Is there anything that you have that's similar in any area of your yeah, life? Yeah, I'm actually extremely particular with who I hang around in my life. Like I have a very, very tight knit group of people that I allow myself to actually spend time with and actually give energy towards because I believe that the people that you spend time around is well, it's actually a statistically proven that the five people you hang around with the most is that you become the average of them. Yes. So I'm very particular with who I spend my time with because I always want to be trying to progress the next level and trying to do something better with my life. So I'm very particular with that. I love it. That's amazing. The Jim Rohn quote, you're the average of the five people you hang around with. And there's been studies and statistics to back this up that if you live or hang around with four fit people, you become the fifth or the sixth. If you hang around with four or five alcoholics, you'll become the fifth or the sixth. There's statistics done around that. It's so important to gauge your circle. Um, and that's great advice. I love it. Exactly. Um, okay. All right. Last one, Daniel. What failure or apparent failure set you up for later success or do you have a favorite failure of yours? One of my biggest failures that I've had in my life would be not prioritizing enough time for family and loved ones. I, a year and a half ago now, I lost my brother. Unfortunately, he was um, murdered back in Australia and I had been so busy chasing a career and trying to make it successful myself that I actually had pushed back time to go back to Australia to meet my family again. And within that time, we had booked flights and just 10 days before we were due to land in Australia, my brother was murdered and that destroyed me, that devastated me. That's, and yeah, I think that's one of the things that when I say people learn from, smart people learn from their mistakes, really smart people learn from other mistakes. Um, if you take nothing else from this episode, your close network, your family, your friends, prioritize that time. And the thing is, I think now, and I know from speaking with you, that Amanda and your family are the closest thing to you now and the most important thing. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. And, and I'm sure that you got that lesson from that as, as tragic as it was. Um, you came out a stronger version because of it. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you for sharing that, Daniel. So. I want to say a massive thank you for coming on because I know how crazy your schedule is. You're, you're about to step on stage at the European Championships to represent Ireland. Yeah. Um, your business with Recalibrated Bodies is booming. You guys are traveling all the time. So thank you so much for coming up and coming on the episode. I really appreciate it. Where is the best place for people to find out more about you and Recalibrated Bodies? The three best places for the people to find out more about us is first our Instagram page, which is just Recalibrated Bodies. You can search that. 
Facebook, which is Recalibrated Bodies as well, and then our website as well, which is www.recalibratedbodies.com. You can find all of our programs, articles, and anything else about us up there. Awesome, man. Guys, I'll be linking everything in the show notes. I'll have the website, all the social media, and everything will be linked across. So just click on through and definitely follow Daniel Amanda if you're not doing it already. Hope you guys got loads of value from this. Thank you again, Daniel. Catch you guys soon. <laughs>